Would you join me in welcoming Pastor Christy Fimbres? I feel like that, like, hey, church. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, you know what? I still get amazed every time I hear about another life being transformed through that leadership university. It is a program that Pastor Marco just stirred the embers of. He said, we've got to write our own material. We've got to get on paper what we are doing here at the Wayworld Outreach and start training up leaders. And don't you know, I felt just like that Alex said, um, felt about, I walked into something, I said, yeah, let's do it. And I said, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? And God, five years later, is still graduating students, training up leaders, and imparting God's wisdom into people's lives. It's amazing. And we get to be a part of it, church, everything that God is doing here. Tonight, I am going to get into Mark chapter 6. Dum, dum, dum. How many people, I don't, you know, I'm, 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 no, no shame, no shame tonight. Because tonight we're a little bit catch up. But I hope that everybody in this room, everybody that is watching online, that you guys are following along in your growth books, that you guys are applying it, that you guys are reading the scriptures, saying the declarations, that you guys are looking for those things that you are grateful for. I open my book every single day and I am constantly impacted. I remember when I told the Lord, God, I'm gonna be faithful to this devotional. I'm gonna be faithful every day to it. And I said, um, Give me new eyes. I know I've read the book of Mark. I know I've read it in multiple translations, God. I, I know that I've, I, I've done the studies, but you know what, God? I don't want to go into it knowing. I want to go into it seeing. I want to see what you have for me. I want to go into it receiving. I want hands wide open to receive the brand new. So maybe you read it this morning, and maybe you didn't read it all week. <laughs> but can we be ready to receive tonight, church? Can we go into this with eyes wide open, with some spiritual eyes to see? Because I am really, really excited. I had to like rewrite this like four times to go like smaller, 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 smaller. I think my first draft was like four pages long. I said, hmm, I wonder if they'll give me an hour. That's okay. <laughs> but, but we're going to stay, keep it really short. And at first I thought, oh, I'm just going to, it's just going to be in Mark chapter 6. I don't know, this Mark chapter 6. And the more I read, the more I studied, the more I prayed today, this, this title kept coming back to me. They may or may not have it because I was wrestling back and forth with it. But the title that I'm going to give you tonight, so you can write it down, whether you have it or not, God bless media, it's not their fault if they don't, is set back or set up. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, right? Is this a set back or is you, are you getting set up? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, the name that is above every single name, the name that echoes through eternity, the name that causes demons to tremble, the name that stirs the fire of God inside of us. God, we call on that name, and we thank you, Jesus, that when we call, you respond. When we reach out, you reach down. When we need you, you show up. There is nothing, God, that you can't do in this atmosphere. Fear. So we come into agreement with those declarations that Pastor Marco echoed at the beginning of the service tonight. God, we are writing things down. We are calling on heaven. You know every need in the room, spoken and unspoken, and you are ready to answer. So we silence demonic voices in the atmosphere that have been telling them for too long they couldn't have it, that it couldn't change, that it's going to stay the same. We tear down the lies, and Lord, we exalt your truth in the atmosphere tonight. We are ready, Lord. Speak. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Are we ready, church? Come on. So when I'm reading um, the book of Mark, I want to know a little bit more about Mark. You know, the guy who wrote the book. <laughs> you know? Like, I want to know who's talking to me. And so, Mark, I'm going to give you a little history lesson really quick. Sorry, L-U, I'm already, somebody said, you look like the principal tonight. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, guys. I'll try not to. Uh, <laughs> but Mark was actually Barnabas's, um, I think, cousin or nephew. He was related, a younger, younger um, family member. And Barnabas 
is the same, I'm sorry, and, and uh, Mark is the same John Mark in the book of Acts. So if you read the book of Acts and you've heard about Paul's ministry journeys, you know that John Mark went with Barnabas and he went with, um, he went out with Paul, but he ran into some issues, didn't he? He got homesick. The ministry life was hard. Being on the sea was hard. Traveling was hard. You know, living this life for Jesus that he thought looked so beautiful from afar that he grew up watching, that he had longed for, that he had heard the words of Jesus preach, and he said, I want to live for Jesus. I want to serve him. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to launch churches. I'm going to save souls. And he got out there, and he said, wow, this is more than I thought. I didn't anticipate the warfare. I didn't anticipate the emotional distress or or the things my mind would start to wander to. I didn't realize I still had to work on myself when I got out here and tried to work on others. It happens. I've been in counseling sessions like, ooh, I might have to talk to somebody after this. You know, I say this a lot in my DG, and I'm always like, I think I'm asking for mercy. I always say, never underestimate, right, that God's divinity because of the frailty of my humanity. God is powerful. God is awesome. God is able. Christy crumbles. Christy's weak. Christy can do maybe five pounds, ask humble beast. Maybe, on a good day. But Christy plus Jesus... You put those two in the mix and all of a sudden, I feel like a giant. You know, just the other day I was um, speaking at Elevate. How many ladies were at Unity Night, right? I was speaking with Elevate on a panel, you know, and I felt, I, I wore my, my heels. I, I felt tall. I felt like a, I felt like I fit in. And, and after the fact, you know, somebody said, oh, I never realized how short you were. You were next to all those normal sized ladies. So now I'm going to just say I want to be on the stage by myself. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. I love being there. Um, but, but this is the thing. You know, you can start to think in your own mind that you're bigger than you are. You, you can start to, you know, I've been in church. You know, I've been six months sober. And then you find yourself in a situation, Right? And you're like, whoa. And the enemy comes whispering in your ear, and he starts challenging your salvation. Like, whoa, maybe I'm not even saved at all. Mark, I'm just, Mark went home to mama. Mom, I can't do this. Mom, I'm not as big as I thought. And, and you, know, he, you know, his cousin Barnabas is like, come on, let's take him out again. Let's try again. You know, like, like Pastor Chris say, come on out to Pomona again. We can do this again. Like Andrew Elkanah, come out to, you know, adopt a block again. You know, all the men of God be rallying you. Come on, you can do it. Like Pastor Marco, oh my Lord, pray for Pastor Marco. I don't even know how. Like, I, I swear, I'll say it right now, I am sorry. <laughs> okay? If you don't ever get this on, on tape, Record this one. I'm sorry. You know, I don't, I am literally like kicking and screaming. I am literally like challenging on everything. Every time he says, we're going to go here. I'm like, but mm, should we go there? He's like, but we're going there. But, mm, you know, I'm, I'm that person, okay? And so I am constantly like, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. I am never that person um, that just takes off running in a direction like, you know, totally blindsided. And so I get Mark. You know, he got excited. He jumped into something. And now he's backpedaling like, I don't think I can do this. I got to think this over. I want, I want all the details. And then it causes, that's not just bad enough. We got that situation. But then we see Barnabas is trying to get him to come back out again. And Paul and Barnabas stop fighting. And you know that in the Bible talks about the split. They went their separate ways. They stopped doing ministry together. And you know, they didn't hate each other. But, but guess what? John Mark, he knew a God who was merciful. He knew a God of second chances. He knew a God. He had had seen Peter deny. He had seen Peter betray. He had seen Peter leave and come back. And Jesus kept loving him. And Jesus kept giving him a role to play. And you know what John Mark said? If, If Peter can do it, 
I can do it. And, and sometimes that's how I feel about me. Sometimes I just look around at all the awesome men and women of God. You know, I look at Pastor Lisa all the time, and I'm like, Pastor Lisa can do it. I can do it. You know, if, if, if you know, if, um, who out there is strong? If, if Gavin can do it, I can do it. You know, Gavin was like fighting for his life as an infant and deaf, and, and he's struggling through these things. And guess what? He said, God, you called me to sing. I'm going to do it. There are always going to be oppositions, but they aren't there to keep you from your position. They're preparing you for it. Now, I've been through some stuff, and I thought about quitting more than once, but thank God I have a husband who, who's, uh, I call baby Jesus. I love my husband, okay? You guys should love my husband so much because I don't know how he keeps me calm sometimes. How many times I said, I am done. Uh, Pastor Lisa, you heard me say that before too. <laughs> and she said, oh no, you're not, get back out there. And my husband said, get back in position, don't say that. So if you're in the room and you've been wrestling like, I'm done, if you're in the room tonight and you've been feeling like, I can't do this, it's harder than I thought. If you're in the room tonight and you've been running into some stuff, if you have been facing some giants, fighting some storms, and you don't know if you're going to stay in the boat or not. I'm here to encourage you. <laughs> and next time, be like, if, you know what? If Christy can stay. If God can use her, <laughs> when she's difficult and overthinking, when, when she keeps saying no, when she should have said yes, when she's been broke down, when she has been through it, walked through the flames, and didn't think she'd make it out on the other side, then you can make it. So in Mark chapter 6, I'm going to get started, I swear. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're, they're like, all we got is a title. We have not got one scripture done. Sorry. Lord Jesus. <clears throat> so in Mark chapter 6, and I'm going to, I swear, I was like, mm, I can get through all 34 scriptures, I swear. Okay. <laughs> first 1 through 34. Ready? Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm going to break it up. I'm going to break it up. Um, my first point is this. It's time it's time to tra transition for a promotion. It's time to transition. So, um, like I said, my favorite pastor in the whole wide world is Pastor Marco. Come on, you better shout. He recently confronted me with this phrase. He said, Christy, you need to change the way you think. I was like, I have the mind of Christ. What are you thinking? <laughs> oh my gosh, haven't you seen how much I have grown and developed? <laughs> Obviously, he needs some more conversation with me. <laughs> uh, but it challenged me, you know? I went home. You don't just hear a statement like that and dismiss it. If you do, repent at the altar. But I did go, and I was, I was really, really thinking about that. And I was like, my word of the year this year was abandonment, and then he's challenging me to change the way I'm thinking. I said, whoa, here I am trying to hold on what I need to let go of. See, it doesn't have to be a bad or a broken thing. See, sometimes we get so used to that place of, um, I got to stop um, drinking. I got to get sober. I got to stop sleeping around. I got to live holy. I got to stop, you know, going to the club on the weekend and show up to church on Sunday. And that's good. I want you to do those things. But we, we get this mentality of, and if it's bad, I give it up. If it's not bad, I fight for it. I keep it. But in order to transition to where God is taking us, there's a lot of things we're going to have to let go of. And, and I'm here to tell you that God, that Jesus, he wants to go all the way back to your childhood. He said you learned some things when you were a child. You picked some stuff up when you were a teenager. You saw some things as a young adult. 
that affected how you think. It compromised how you would love. It, it's strangling the purpose of God inside of you. And he said, it's got to go. I know it was a coping mechanism for you before. I know it made you feel strong before. I know it got you through some hard nights before. And I know you feel like it got you to where you're at today. But we got to start transitioning. In Mark 6, 1, Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. Jesus said, in order to make this change, I got to go home. Jesus knew what he was going to face. He, but he also knew what those apostles were going to face when he left. He knew what you were going to face when you came on the scene. And everything he did while he was here was intentional. And so I looked at this moment, right, and I said, whoa. Jesus went home, and they didn't want to deal with him. See, the first thing we have to change is physically. We change some physical location. And it made me just think about Jen and Alex. You know, they were here at San Bernardino, here at the Hallmark campus. And God said, I need you to get up and go to Pomona. There's been some members in this church, God said, I need you to get up and I need you to go to Compton. I need you to go to La Puente. I need you to go out to L.A. There was a whole group of people that God said, get up. I need you to move out of state and go to Arizona. There are people in this room and God has been speaking to you. And he said, Chicago. He said, Detroit. He said, New York. He is telling you where to go and you know it. But we got to be ready to make the move. So Jesus went home because he said, I'm about to move these, uh, these um, the apostles of mine to a whole nother level, and they don't even know it yet. So he gave them this lesson. He said, I want you to see something. So he takes them in, and he said, I'm, we're going to change location. You've only been, you've seen successful there. Let me take you to this place that's dry. Let me take you to this place that don't believe. And he takes them home. Mark 6, 2 through 3. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue in Nazareth. And many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and power to perform such miracles? That sounds good, right? But the very next sentence says, then they scoffed. They made fun. They ridiculed him. They challenged everything he said. Then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter. The son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live right here amongst us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. You know what, you know what I thought when I read that? I said, man, they're still talking about Jesus because you know they didn't say who his daddy was. We know who his mama is, but you know all the drama around his birth, right? We know who his siblings are. They saw Jesus in a familiar way. Sometimes people look at you that way. But more importantly, we got to stop looking at ourselves the same old way. You're not that person anymore. You're not a thief. You're not a liar. You're not a manipulator. That's not you. You're not hard-hearted. You're not difficult. That's not you. See, we got to change our mentalities. So when Pastor Marco had challenged me to change my thinking, I was just like, whoa. You know how hard it is to change your thinking? I was like, literally, I was like, I got to do some paradigm shifting. I got to write some declarations down. I'm going to read this. I'm not kidding, guys. You think I'm joking, but that, I am like that, okay? <laughs> I've got all this stuff broke down. And then I was like, Lord, help Renew my mind. <laughs> Help me be more like you. Whatever you guys are going through, whether it's a, you know, I got to like, get out of where I'm at or I got to change who I think, stop and ask Jesus. Yeah. Don't do it the long way. <laughs> see, see, in this place, they were refusing to believe in who he was because they only knew him as the carpenter, right. not as a messiah. How you know him is how you're going to experience him. So if 
if you only know Jesus, and, and, I, and I hate to say it this way, if you only know Jesus as the one who keeps you sober, you don't know Jesus who empowers you to help other people get free. If you only know Jesus as the one who keeps you from sleeping with your boyfriend, you don't know the Jesus that wants you to be an evangelist. See, Jesus is everything that we need, not some of what we need. Jesus knows who he wants you to be, and every step in the process is taking you there. The good and the bad, okay? So now in this place, for the first time, the disciples see Jesus couldn't, unable, hindered. They had never before seen that Jesus couldn't do something. They just saw him raise that little girl from the dead in chapter 5. They seen him cast out demons. And now he couldn't. And it made me pause. God, why would you show him that? Why would you do that to them? He said, I want you to see what the atmospheres that you are in are doing to the God in you, to God in you. So what I'm trying to say here is, God has purpose in you. God has power in you. God has authority in you. God has holiness in you. God wants to show up and he wants to show out. But when you are surrounding yourself with an atmosphere that is negative, that is tearing you down, okay, that is talking about your leadership, that's talking about your church, that's doubting God, you're like, mm, I don't know if I want to walk in that anymore. I don't know if I want to be a leader. I don't know if I want to finish Holy Warriors. All of a sudden, now your fire gets put out. It's hindered because you're not in agreement with God. You're in agreement with all the backsliders and backbiters and contrary speakers. God's trying to change atmospheres for you. See, sorry. So there's three ways. He wants to also transition you for promotion spiritually. He sent them and gave them authority to cast out demons. He sent them and gave them authority. This isn't something that you have to earn. It's not like you are born into a special lineage. It's not like we all have to be Levites or something or from the tribe of Judah anymore. Like, there's not a specific role. He just said, I'm going to give this to you because now you're in a relationship with me. But if you don't know him like that, you're not getting the benefits of the relationship. So we need to stop chasing people for what God is trying to give us. In Mark 7 through 9, he told them, don't take nothing, okay? Don't even take a change of clothes, ladies. <laughs> I, I'm about to go with my husband somewhere, and I said, babe, we have to put a whole other extra luggage piece on, right? I can take, we can add on? You'll pay the $100? Because where am I going to put my shoes? They have dress-up nights. The Lord is going to ask you to sacrifice sometimes, right? But this is all about transitioning, not how I used to do it, not how I used to think, not where I used to go, but where is God promoting me to? It may look difficult, it may feel hard, but people's lives are counting on it. If we didn't go to Pomona, Lorraine wouldn't be here. Lorraine showed up at Pomona campus. And now Lorraine is standing in this campus saying, I was disorganized. I'm going to get my life together. The next thing is we need to learn to discern. Hold on. I got this dry throat. <clears throat> we need to learn to discern the places and people you are surrounded by. <clears throat> so I talked about this a little bit. I want to give you this word that's all over Mark. Well, I'm sure it's all over the Bible, but I'm studying Mark right now, right? 
Eremos, E-R-E-M-O-S. And the thing about this word is it has a whole bunch of different um, translations. or It's used a lot of different ways. So it throws you off. And when you first see it in one way, you think it means one thing. But then, but then when I kept seeing it in other places, I said, okay, God, what does this place really mean? You want me to be able to discern and recognize places. That word eremos in Mark chapter 1, the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And what happened in the wilderness? Jesus got tempted. He was fasting. It was hard. Later in Mark chapter 1, we see, I think it's like verse 30 or 35, somewhere in there, that Jesus got up early and went to an isolated place, Eremos. And here we see, in Mark chapter 6, Jesus inviting the disciples, after they get back from their journeys, after they've been empowered to cast out demons, after they've gone out and preached the gospel, right, and they're coming back tired and weary, we see Jesus inviting the disciples to journey with him to Eremos, to a quiet place. When I was praying about coming into 2023, because I don't know about you, but ever since 2020, I'd be praying into the new year. You got to be ready. You don't know what's coming. I got three claps. The rest of you obviously don't have earthquake preparedness kits. It's okay. Don't come to my house, though. Just kidding. I'll be safe. The wilderness is a place for stripping away distractions. For getting alone and honest with God. And when I was praying, coming into this 2023, what I saw was we were going to come right into this wilderness. And then we were going to come right out into some power and authority. I said, it's going to be a turbulent transition. It's not going to be smooth sailing, like I'm just going to walk slowly and casually into 2023. No. And I don't know, I think Pastor Christian said the other day, I feel like I've already done like a million things in in just one month of 2023, right? It's like, does anybody else feel like you have worked so hard? Like you thought like, is it it Thanksgiving yet? (laughs) I was like, what's going on around here, Jesus? But the wilderness is a place that we get power. The wilderness is a place, actually, to transition through to get to your purpose. What you don't need to take into the next season comes off in the wilderness. Jesus was fasting. There's no resources. There's no resources in the wilderness. Mm Mm-mm. They're like, Jesus, sustain me. (laughs) The wilderness can feel lonely if you don't recognize that Jesus is with you. It's in the wilderness that I recognize his presence. And he reveals those things in me that I need to deal with. So we need to stop resisting those quiet places. Stop resisting those alone moments with God where we can get before him and be exposed and deal with stuff. Get in that place. The wilderness experience helps us to discern what hinders ministry and God's power from working through us. So when I am in the crowd, when I'm in the commotion, when I am caught up, it is really hard for me to recognize things. It's hard for me to discern. It's hard for me to see, like, why am I not getting to the next level? Why am I not growing? Why am I not moving forward like I want to? I went to Africa for the first time. It's got to be like... I want to ask Pastor Lisa. She might remember like 12 years ago, 10 years ago. Abriana was what? She just turned 18? No, nine years. I don't know. 
somewhere in that time frame. Less than 10 years, maybe, I don't know. But I went for the very first time. And the thing I wanna say is this, when I came back after being there for like three weeks, is God had exposed, I had to change location, I had to change my mentality, I had to change in spirituality. <laughs> and when I came back, I remember Pastor Marco asked me this question. He just said, like casual, like, oh, what, so what did you learn while you were there? What'd you, what'd you get? What happened while you were there? And I remember thinking about this. And I said, I always thought that God gave me a hard life because he knew that, that I, would, um, I could take it, I could handle it, and I would still believe in him. But when I was in that place, which I recognize now as a wilderness, as a stripping away, as a getting alone with God, what I would say that I learned was that God gave it to me easy. When I look at what other people have gone through and lived through, you know, when I, when I looked into situations where there was little girls that were being sold for cows, I said, God, you gave it to me easy. They just had this massive earthquake in Syria. There's earthquakes all over the Middle East right now going on. Just massive, horrible earthquakes. Buildings are falling down. And I came across this video of this, of this little girl. And she's underneath a piece of rubble. And she's covering her little brother. The little girl has to be maybe like seven years old. And her brother's probably like four or five. And they have a recording of her talking, and they translate it, and they said that she's telling the man who found her, um, if you save us, I'll be your slave. And, and I want to share these stories with you, because sometimes the enemy gets us caught up in our woe is me, poor my poor life, and I can't do for anybody else because everything I've been through. But do you know tonight that God gave it to you easy? That God saw fit to keep you in your right mind? That God brought you to the Wayworld Outreach? That God gave you salvation and eternal life and forgiveness of sin? That he is feeding you? So the next time the enemy comes and tries to tell you, you can't serve, you can't give, you can't go and build the kingdom because woe is you. You tell the devil, God gave it to me easy. So what is hindering us, though, in that wilderness place that needs to be exposed again? Well, what I was trying to talk about is human thinking, being self-dependent or without faith. When, when I need my own human reasoning and understanding to figure things out, well, how can I afford, like, like Lorraine said, um, I was so excited, I just signed up and registered, I got home and wrote it down in paper, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, what did I do? I can't afford this. And then what did the Lord do? He supernaturally provided because she had been obedient. She came out of her location, came out of her own understanding, right? And God changed her. Praise, it was just amazing. Praise the Lord. Mark 5 says, and because of their own unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles there among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. Because of their unbelief, because of their unbelief, he couldn't do anything in this place. Hmm. So the miracles God is performing is directly equivalent to the faith that you're walking around with. So again, when, I was, when Pastor Mark was speaking in the beginning, I was like, oh my gosh, there he goes. He's already he's gonna save my stuff. <laughs> so when Pastor was like, this atmosphere right here, right, God's in this atmosphere. It's like we know that. No matter what you've dealt with this week, I don't care if, and I talked to a sister in, in the cafe tonight. She was in a car accident yesterday. She got her, her hand bandaged up. She's like, I'm at church. That's where we need to be. She's like this. She's like, it's just a small fracture. I was so, and she's like this. She's like, oh, I can't move my hand though. <laughs> She's not over there like I'm a single mom with five babies and no car. She's not sitting at home crying. She said, I know where God is at. I need to be in this atmosphere because the devil's not taking me out. But some of us, 
I got a headache. I can't come to church. Are you going to fight to get in the atmosphere and get your breakthrough? Because the, the miracles that we're experiencing are directly equivalent to the faith that we're walking in. All right, we're almost done, guys, I'm, I promise. All right, so hindrance, sorry, hindrance, um, number two. Um, people dealing with sin can become tools in the hands of the enemy. People dealing with sin. And so this is where we have to be alert. Now, um, we are, you know, Jesus was a friend to sinners, yes, but he didn't compromise with them, okay? Now, what we can't do is say, well, I'm just, I just want to show them love, so this, they want to go hang out at the bar. I'm not going to have drinks. I'm just going to hang out with them. I'm witnessing. <laughs> witnessing yourself backslide. <laughs> I, I don't know. Some pe pe sometimes you got to listen to what you're about to say before you say it. That's all I'm going to say to you guys, okay? Some people have told me some crazy stuff, and I'm like, hmm. Where did that sound okay to you? Um, but we're, when we're in sin, we're too confused. We, we can't tell, right? We don't know that we're, we're topsy-turvy. So in um, Mark 6, 16, and we have that horrible, the horrible story. Poor, um, poor John the Baptist, right? Right in the middle of Mark. But it says, when Herod heard about Jesus, he said, John the Baptist I beheaded has come back from the dead. So he heard about Jesus, and, and here he is saying, think, feeling guilty, like, oh, my gosh, now he came back from the dead to haunt me. See, Herod Antipas, he actually respected, he respected John the Baptist. He knew he was a holy man. He knew he was great. But he was hanging around with Herodias, and she was a dirty sinner. And there was some compromise in that house. And because of that sin, he was influenced to now kill John the Baptist. And now he's living with some guilt and shame. You know, like, like you felt when you went and, and hung out with your old friends from high school? You know how you felt when you went to that family party and you had a couple beers? And you knew you shouldn't have done that? And now all of a sudden, you're dealing with shame. You're dealing with guilt. And you're doing things you should, never should have done before. Don't allow yourself to be in the company, right, with people who are in sin, engaged in sin, and start to partake in, and start to allow it to compromise you. We're there to be a light in dark places. And if you can't shine your light in that place, change locations. We started off with that. The wilderness, though, uh, does something. It, it helps us exp um, discern what helps ministry, okay? Let's get to some good things, right? Enough backsliding sinners and in the dark people. We're going to go into the light now. So how, how can we, how can we um, help ministry? Number one, be rested and fed. Jesus is the one. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest, right? See, rest is something you just get to receive. He also says, taste and see, right? Taste and see that I'm good, okay? So what I'm talking here is, yeah, I want you to sleep your six to eight hours. I want you to have a couple meals a day, you know, two, two, three, I don't know, doesn't, whatever you need. But we need to be fed and rested spiritually too, emotionally rested. You know when you're in that unrested state emotionally, you're all turbulent, everything is setting you off? We have to learn how to rest in him. I'm going to go through these quickly. You can read 31 through 34. I just want to read the points. Number two, okay, faith. Faith, okay? People ran after Jesus. They recognized his greatness, and it allowed ministry to flow. And then three, compassion. When compassion is expressed in the Bible, every time you see a move of power right after that. We're in a place tonight, church where God wants to move through you. So many of you in this room have experienced him. So many of you have had your lives already transformed. And he's saying to you tonight, it's time to transition.
It's time to promote. It's time to let me use you to bring me glory. It's time for you to let God use you to bring people to salvation. Whatever that dust is, on the bottom of your shoes, from being in those places that injured you, that harmed you, that compromised you, tonight we're gonna shake it off. Tonight we're getting all the dirt off. Tonight we are gonna receive the healing and the freedom and the breakthrough and the transitioning that we need to be who God needs us to be. People are hurting. And I'm not undermining where you're hurting. So tonight, if you're hurting in the room, tonight, if the Holy Spirit took you back to your childhood, if the Holy Spirit reminded you of a place that you picked up something that you don't need to keep walking around with, then we're gonna invite you up to the altar tonight. We're gonna invite you up to get healing. So if you guys can stand up with me right now, I want to begin to get you guys ready. I want you to get ready to head out to new campuses, ready to evangelize to neighbors. I want you to get ready to sleep at peace, to stop fighting with your spouse every day. I want you to get ready to disciple your children. And if you don't know Jesus tonight, If you have been looking on from afar, if you've been sitting in this room week after week and hearing all these great messages and seeing all of these lives transformed, but you haven't yet walked up here to have your life transformed, to have your life impacted, Jesus is waiting. Jesus is right here for you right now. And Jesus wants you to come up. Anybody in the room tonight that doesn't know him? Anybody in the room tonight that needs him? Anybody in this place that knows, I gotta start transitioning my thinking the way that I'm thinking has been wrong. It's been broken. The way that I have been living, it's wrong. Or it's not at the level I want it to be. We're inviting you up tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I believe that there's going to be some miracles at this altar tonight. That things that have been happening for too long... They're stopping tonight. Places that you've been trying to get to with Jesus. You're going to reach it tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And like I said, if there's anybody in this room tonight that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and you're ready to get in the boat with him, you're ready to cross over with him tonight, you can put your hands in the air right now. You can raise your hands. We see you. Thank you, we see you. We're celebrating you tonight. Thank you. We're gonna go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in this moment. And Lord, we thank you for every single person at this altar. For every single life that said, I'm willing to get up out of where I am and go to where you're calling me. Every single person in this altar right now that said, Jesus, I want to receive you. And if you're saying that for the first time, go ahead and repeat it with me. Say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I let go of my old life, my old way of thinking. And I want to live for you. So fill me, Holy Spirit, 
and save me, Jesus. Transform me and use me for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you did tonight, for every heart that was ministered to. We thank you right now abundantly. Lord, I just feel a call right now to pray against generational curses. So, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, every single life that is at this altar that has been bound, that has been chained down with weights, that has been trying to be set free, but the enemy kept holding them back, in the name of Jesus, we break the bondage. Lord, they have been bought with a high price, and they are yours. We serve the enemy notice. He can't have their lives anymore. They are transformed. It is a new day. Thank you, Jesus, for answering our prayers, for moving in our behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. If you received a word tonight, set back or set up. Can we give Christy a round of applause for what a great word that was? Church, if you need any prayer, come forward. We'd love to pray with you, but we want to remind you that we have service Sunday. Sunday is going to be a powerful word. Pastor Marco is going to be bringing a message this Sunday, and you don't want to miss it. Don't forget, church, we're inviting people right now to Marriage Challenge. So on your way out, pick up a few flyers and door hangers. Let's spread the word. Let's evangelize. Let's witness. And let's invite people, because this is a big outreach. We love you, church. Also, shout out. The young adults are going to be having a service this Friday night. We're gonna be talking about relationships. My wife Yesenia and I will actually be preaching this Friday night at 7 p.m. If you wanna come out, young adults, show up this Friday in the South Hall, we love to see you. We love you, church. Don't forget, this Sunday we are not having our Sunday night service. We'll be having service. Our next Sunday night revival services begin February 26th. Register for lead night, February 19th. I know that was a lot, but there's a lot going on here at the church. We love you. If you need prayer, come on up. We love to pray with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night.